Yehovah'ım Allah Hakk'ı. Allah'ım Allah'ım Hakk'ı. Yehovah'ım Allah Hakk'ı. Ya mey, bırak kez. Yehovah'a kadar Allah, makaryan tiyaz. Yehovah'a eranay, Yehovah'a yalhim. Kuryos tiyaz pentek reyta, kuryos tiyaz pistos. Elde et Yehovah, el emna Yehovah. Ibas liyan kuryos, otiyos, opent reyta. Bas liyos, bas liyan, kai kuryos, kuryon. Yehovah da bar halal, Elohim da bar halal. Yehovah Elohim, gadol gadol gebrah. El Elohim Israel, Jesus Christos. Ton Christon, Jesus ton Kurion. Kurion, Imahagion, Penta Greta, Gadol Gadol, Gibbet. Jehovah Ishmael Kam, Jehovah Shamma. Yelmakum Jehovah, Yelmakum Yapa. Netzak Israel, la sheker, gava, gava. Triembos, Jehova. Jesus Christos, Panta Greta, gadol, gadol, gebra. Mororos, nasa, Elohim, Elohim. Ilei lai shalut, Jehova malak. Jehova malak, olam, olam, ad. Yehova Elohino, Yehova Ekad, Gadol, Gadol, Kebura. Zohan Logan, Ogar, Tautios, Dulas, Desmios, Despotes, Dikae Sune, and Jesus Christos. Kurion, Kurion, Kurion. Hagion, Hagion, Hagion. Numa Pantagreta, Gadol, Gadol, Gebra. Yehova, Ishmael, Kam. Yehova, Shamba. Elna kum Yehova, Elna kum Yapa. Netzak Israel, La Sheker, Gava, Gava. Triembos Yehova, Jesus Christos, Pantagreta, Gadol, Gadol, Gebra. Yehova ihe Elohim, Yehova ihe Elohim. <coughs> Ilei lai shalut, Yehova malak. Yehova malak, Jesus Christos, gadol, gadol, gebra. Yehova, Yehova el, Yehova. Yehova rakum shen. Yehova el, arak api, rab. Keset emet. Yehova, mine, mine, tikel, ufarsin. Derek, emuna bakar, mishfat, shava. The megalogai of Yahweh, el elion Elohim, is always alive and powerful. Sharper than any two edged sword. <coughs> Piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, that the man of Lord God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to Lord God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, a very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inherent great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkeno to the highest, and peace be unto the mankind on this earth. To those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone in Christ alone. Great goodness and goodwill towards them who love to walk breath by breath 
in the cherishing and in this nurturing of this great and unique indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost. One more day being renewed in our lives to the praise of Lord God's glory. Realizing how important it is for us to understand the Lord's mind. If it is not the Lord's mind on this earth in every matter, then we are not sober, nor vigilant, but rather we are like the disqualified people under the sping of Harad, who relaxedly drank the water rather than lapping the water like a dog and not letting go the equipments of warfare from them. So every day it's essential factor for us to look into the subjects of the Lord's mind and understand and renovate our thinking so that we are representing the Most High Lord God in the presence of such powers and crooked nation generations where the word of Lord God is not being honored at all. So given this great privilege to serve Christ our Lord our God in the spirit of his truth, having to look that we human beings who are fit for nothing as the fall resulted in eternal damnation, by the grace of the Lord God giving us the salvation and making the people who are worthy to walk in his presence in the sphere of truth, in the spirit, controlling them, redeeming them, training them up and leading them up and making their life to the praise of his glory so that we can walk in that great fellowship of the Lord God for the eternal mission what Lord God the Father has given to his Son being prayed for us in John chapter 17 in verse 1 and 2 and desiring a great eternal relationship with him as First John chapter 1 verse 1 through the teachers followed by serving him in spirit and truth as John 4 24 and recognizing the things which shall be to the process of manifesting his name and having to keep his word. So dear brethren, given this opportunity for us to serve Christ in the spirit of spirit and truth, Let's use the privacy of a priest to confess our sins through rebound. And let's come back and continue what Lord God the Father has prepared and kept for us. On today's date of eternity past, to the praise of his glory, in his matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. We shall continue after this prayer. Sanctify yourselves to look upon the great and unique pearly wonders of the Lord's mind. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, once again coming into the marvelous grace of Lord to learn thy truth. Thy holiness, O Lord, which always causes us to realize that we cannot stand in your presence apart from your grace. That, O Father, you have been so much gracious, kindness, and mercy upon our lives. That, Father, though we don't deserve to breathe one more breath on this life, one more day to be looking in our eyes, that, Father, you have given us graciously to realize how much you love us, in spite we are grieving and squelching and vexing and lying and resisting, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you have given and formed us in your image and likeness so that having the sperm of yours and making up our lives according to yours, O Lord, being begotten of your incorruptible seed, we could walk according to the image of Christ. Having that hope, O Lord, you have given us this privilege to serve you. If not who we are, Lord, we can stand in the presence and say, You are the only one, Lord, that we need to worship you. We are nothing, Father, to talk those terms. Because you created us, there is none other apart from you. And you are the only one, O Lord, given us this enlightenment through your word to understand and to realize that we are here to serve you in the spirit of spirit and in truth. So, Father, given this privilege to understand, being sealed unto the day of redemption by the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we come to access the things pertaining to the today's state of eternity past, O Lord, which Thou hast prepared and kept for us, so that, Father, we could enrich ourselves in Your Word and make up our lives worthy to walk and talk Your terms and represent Your glorious glory to this world. So, Father, being grateful and thankful for this privilege as we study them, we pray the mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to enlighten, challenge, and to bless us by the message which thou hast prepared and kept for us on today's date of eternity past the praise of your glory in a matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. In Christ's name we ask so with Lord. Amen. Dear brethren, we have to understand that 
A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. With him, with the increase of the lips, shall be filled. The fruit of the mouth, man shall be satisfied. Where? Which comes from the beten. The same thing what we look from John chapter 7 in verse number 38. Emphasizing out of his belly shall flow the rivers of living water. The same beten over here we talk. So he says, man's mouth is the root cause so that your belly can be filled. So then what is that the mouth of man is able to talk? What is that you're able to perform? Are you able to talk as Philippians chapter 4 teaches to us the things that which are pure? You have many affairs on this earth to talk about and look about and deal about on this earth. But these affairs are nothing. As Philippians chapter 4, when we look upon this great chapter, he talks about conclusion, emphasizing the point, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report. You know, who have this report? Who have these things? Only the word of God. So how your mouth has been filling up? If your mouth is not able to open up with divine oracles or the word of Lord God, things pertaining to the Lord's mind, how come your stomach be filled? Then what you're doing in the other affairs of this life, you're looking and talking vain things, vanity things, vague things. Therefore your beaten or the belly is not been satisfied. Your belly is not been satisfied so that the rivers of living water are not able to flow through it. So what is the fruit? which comes out from the man's mouth. If they have been satisfying for your belly, that has to be nothing but the word of God. That's why we ask you to come and learn the word of Lord God every day, dear brother. If anyone is able to talk to you, they're able to look and understand the things pertaining to you. They should come to say, as we find that great chapter in Malachi, chapter 2, emphasizing the point in verse number 7, stating that what it is exactly I have made the Levites to me. He calls the priest's lips. Again, the word Kohen, we read, who is a priest? A man who has grown up into grammatias, program. Not just reading the Bible, will qualify you as a priest. Writing the Bible will qualify you as a priest. That's the word what we find Kohen in the Hebrew the pictographical representation in his vigor and valor of his lifetime. He has to at least once write the entire Bible. Let us stop preaching, if not that, because people will be finding pleasure, as Luke chapter 6 emphasizes in verse number 26, ideally they're going to talk. Who are the people who are going to talk ideally? Kalos, we read the word, that means thought, that which is agreeable. Or yatab, that makes you to be more happy. Who are these people? They make up their soul to be satisfied first. They look upon the body and the soul. They don't concentrate on the spirit. With the spirit, it demands the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. It demands nothing but pure exegetical word of God from the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. Because there can be no replacement for that. Your human spirit demands pure word of God. But people who talk ideally, the lips of the priests, men who haven't been grown up into grammatias, they make up your soul and your body to be satisfied. Therefore, they don't concentrate on the things pertaining to the Lord's mind of the heaven. Therefore, they are still walking their mouth to be filled up with all mannerism of what we can call tail-bearing, backbiting, or retaliation, or whatsoever you can go for with every mental attitude, sin associated with the soul of the thing which could erect from their thinking. If you can look in a conversation call, talking about X, Y, Z men, and you people can't understand how much of your grace has been wasted over there, those things he said, edify them in First Peter chapter 2 verse number 15, shut the mouth of the fools, this is the will of Lord God the Father. By how you can shut them, you can teach them the right word of Lord God, that's way how you can shut them. That's how you can make up their mouth to be shut, by giving them what is the purpose of your hope in Christ? What is the purpose of knowing the word of Lord God? 
So teach to them, be a man of an example where they can come back and follow your footsteps and say, we learned from him the process of dealing the things that which are pure and good and honest of a good virtue as Philippians chapter 4 verse number 8 teaches to us. The things which have virtue in them, the things which have a good report in them, the things which have a great tidings in them. And that's what we have been called over here to look. A virtue for it. A standard for it. In the conversation call, you tell to the persons or to the people who are talking to them, let's talk doctrine, let's talk the word of God, rather than discussing the events, what they have gone. What your conversation will be, just look. Either to malign them, gossip them, judge them, criticize them. Backbite them or be a tail bearer to carry the things. But you'll not find a word where you can tell them this man has been now converted or been translated or transformed to the nearness of the kingdom of God. This man has been taught the word of God. You know why? Because that's the eternal mission of God the Father, being sending his son, says John chapter 17, the great prayer, what he prayed for us. If you can look upon that. In John chapter 17, in verse number 1 and 2 itself, you'll find. This word spake Jesus and filled up his eyes, lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come, glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. And I says in verse 2, has given him the power, exercise authority over all the flesh, that he should give eternal life to, to as many as you have given them. That means, what does it say? You have given him that authority. You have given him that work to manifest or to make known to the entire world. His eternal plan over all the flesh, what it is, so that they can have this eternal life to them. To all so ever who believe in Christ. That means, he's saying the people who are sanctifying themselves, the people who are able to get back and look into the will of Lord God the Father, for them he is talking, saying that to give this eternal life, to give this eternal power. And that's very, very important for us. And that's what he prays over here. And that's the reason why the pastor teacher should be very, very alert in training the people to see how they have been molded up in getting back to the will of God. How they have to make up their life associating to the standards of the Lord's truth on this earth. Now that's very essential for a pastor teacher. That's why when the people are talking, better make up the conversations to look and to lead them for godly edification in the word of the Lord, leading them if he's an unbeliever to salvation, or if the believer correcting them for edification in the complete knowledge of Christ, because they have been sealed unto the day of redemption by Lord God the Holy Spirit. You know why does Lord God the Father give you one more day, one more chance? Because he knows that he has given to you his pearl. You know how to tell that in simple words. If you have your son or daughter, for example, you know very well you'll be proud by their activities because they have your sperm in that. You'll be very proud of them. Like the children of Rechabites who were there in Jeremiah chapter 35. They made the father proud. That's what Christ, the Lord of God, calls them and teaches an example through their life, saying that how pure they were. For example, the line of Zodokites, who they were the priests to the Lord. They kept the things pure. Sometimes it would be better for us not to have any genealogy and to die like Paul, because no need to corrupt the word of God. It will be really great, you know. Giving as an example, because Lord God the Father knows how better he can make up things to be brought up into existence without nothing to be there. Not necessarily that we have our progeny to continue to the next generation. He knows how to handle his word. He knows how to make up his children. He knows how to make up the things because everyone has his essence. Everyone has his likeness. Everyone has his image being made in that, in that great caliber of Christ. Therefore, he has that absolute confidence upon us that we shall come back and conform to the image of Christ and we shall come to serve the Lord of a God in the spirit of spirit and in truth. He knows that he has that absolute confidence upon us. And that's the reason, dear brethren, what we have been given this privilege to know the truth. Tomorrow you breathe again, you be, you be grateful and thankful to the Lord. <coughs> 
Because the reason for that is very, very simple. Because he has a great hope upon you. He has a great expectation through you because you have been made in his image. You have a great hope. You don't have any hope. Because you're not going to the days of purification, what we read from Esther chapter 2 yesterday. They went through the days of purification, they became maidens. A six years of oil training and six years of scent training. Aroma training, that's what you work. And then afterwards, oh, so sorry, six months, not six years, six months. And the span of one year, they have been well prepared to come to meet the king. And she was been obtained favor of Lord God from all those maidens. Not that he's going to show some favorism for X, Y, Z terms. He's going to show the favorism because she obeyed the words of a father called to be Mordecai. And she did not reveal her identity to them. The same thing for us as well. When we have kept the word of Lord God on this earth, as he prays in John 17, 6, he is also going to manifest for us that eternal reward. Therefore he goes to obtain favor upon you. Therefore he goes to give you that mercy upon you. And that's what we have been called over here to do in the will of Lord God, to do that which is right and good in his sight, not in our sight, not in our thinking, not in our standards of mind. But you know, dear brethren, what we are doing today? <laughs> we are simply the worst people of all time on the earth. Though we have been given the completed can of scripture to understand what's your mind. Your mind has not been filtered up with the word of God. Your mind has been filled up with every nonsense, what we can call, of this earth. Every things which have been there for you as a neurons. If you can go to sit and analyze those neurons, is there anything good? As bad and good could be bought out of that collection of the fish, what we look in the Matthew chapter 13, one of the parable. Likewise, if you can sit and you can pull out your brain <coughs> and understand... <laughs> How many bad things are there? How, many, how much of evil is there? And how much of the junk has been present which you can simply delete it? That's what you have sometimes in your smartphone to understand. Which goes on to say, clean the tra trash. Unnecessary occupation of your data. Sometimes the trash will include for 6 GB, 7 GB of your memory. Better go and delete it. Likewise, don't keep unnecessary things in your brain which are not acquainted with the glory of God and the purpose of God and the will of God because he said you will obtain favor when you go to keep his word and keeping his word is reciting day by day his word. Breath by breath his word as we find in Malachi 3.16 a book of remembrance for the people who are going to talk about the word of God. Therefore, we have the things which he said. If you hear his voice today, harden not your heart. As long as it has been today, encourage one another in the book of Hebrews. Why garbage shall not be accumulated in your brain? If you are accumulating garbage, you will become like an animal, living soul. You will not become Zopoe on Numa, the great performance of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which has to be manifested through your body in this earth, will be failed. It will be absolutely nuisance. And you can call that you're a Christian. You know how privileged we shall be in these churches to be called as Christians in Christ. They longed for in the past. Moses longed for this era. As we look in Luke chapter 10, the people they also longed for. The wise, the prudent men. And the word of Lord God records, these things were hidden from them, but now it has been given for you. These things were hidden from them, but now it has been given for us, revealed for us. How much grateful and thankful we need to be to the Lord. On the other hand, rather than being grateful and thankful to the Lord, we are indulging in the lusts of the flesh of this earth. We are indulging that. And what we are doing day by day, blaspheming Lord God. We are making ourselves separated from the standards 
of divine requirements. Therefore, what we're going to look, we're going to look callous kind of people, the people who come with itching ear priests, the people who talk that which is pleasing for your mind, not for your spirit. Therefore, they always look upon those things which are going to please you. And what they do, they go to encourage you to talk about the things in the day-to-day -day affairs of this life, which are going to talk about what we can call in simple terms, all your mental attitude sins, all you can call Christian moral or immoral activities of you. That's what you go to talk. You're not talking them the word of God. You're not training them the word of God because the Kohen priests are not been there for you today. That caliber of the men who can become grammatious program, that caliber of the men who can go to law and learn the importance of every iota and canon of the Bible and come to teach the word of Lord God with proper isogogy, catechism, and exegesis in the Lord's mind. That caliber of the men are not been found for us in our pulpits. Why? Because first of all, it's a very difficult thing for them to kneel down and read the Bible, far less they can kneel down and write a copy of the law of the Lord of a God with trembling fear because they knew they have nothing on this earth to do apart from glorifying Lord God the Father's name to the highest. Therefore, they knew very well it is nothing for us on this earth but God first. Therefore, they lay down the life for Christ. As Christ, O oh Lord of God, laid down his life for us, so they also laid down their life for Christ. Therefore, they come to look and learn the word of Lord God, no matter how difficult may be the things. And the great qualification is the fear of Lord God, not your intelligence, not your standards of your expertise level of thinking. It requires first the fear of Lord God. What sort of a fear? Trembling fear of Lord God. Your great broken heartedness in the standards of Lord God. That's needed first to be qualified for the presence of Lord God service. You love the Lord God no matter what. Make up your heart like a pillar. Make up your hands like a rock to write the word of Lord God. And make up your knees to be present in the presence of Lord God the Father to serve Him. What else you need? What else you require on this earth? Any other things what you think on this earth of vanity, dear brethren, they will not call you even for an ounce of a value in this church age to be considered because you are something far greater than the past dispensation of believers. You are called to be the kinekatesis, new spiritual quality of a species that which did not exist any time in the past or will be in the future. Right now in the church age you are and you don't have a place for such nonsense of data to be filled in your mind. Worthless data, garbage, clean the trash of your brain and renew it with the word of Lord God. Reconstruct with the mind of Lord God. Today we have been so happy to find in our smartphones the Bible reading apps which go to read. Which go to read. In the English you have the King James Version Bible reading app. Likewise, in, in, in our India country, we have many states. For example, where we reside in the South India, we have the states of these people where they talk about the languages. For example, in Kerala, where Thomas had come, we have Malayalam. You have that Bible entirely given for you. You can just, load, just, just download it and you can go to listen it rather than listening stupid things of the world. We have the things pertaining to where Thomas was being killed. He came to Kerala. He was killed in the state called as Tamil Nadu, that is called to be as Mylapore and that place the people talk about Tamil you have Tamil Bible given for you and from there where we can come a great man John Hare in the state of Andhra Pradesh where he goes to talk about the people in the languages of in, in Telugu so you have a Telugu Bible download it and the first language being translated in this world in, in, in the state of India called to be in Karnataka, the Kannada language of the Bible. You have Kannada, download it. You have English, download it. You have many languages over there. You download it and you listen. You have to be an effective evangelist for them. You have to be an effective man, well equipped to have the knowledge of God and talk to them the words of which they have been given for them in the Bible because Bible is the only truth that can reflect as a witness to this world, not your mental attitude sense of gossiping, judging, maligning, going upon with retaliation or vindictiveness or going upon with any mannerism of backbiting or tailbearing. All the things will are not the truth. They don't come to you to the heaven. Better drop them down right now itself. Talk to them in edification of the truth. That's what we find the word. In Galatians chapter 5, which we have read, 
He says over there, the things which have been pertaining to the opposite ones towards self, it is called love, joy, peace. The people who are opposite to you, long-suffering, gentleness and goodness. The word long-suffering, macrothumia, it's meant to say to be having your patience and then slow in avenging the things pertaining to wrong. So here, dear brother, and what are the things in the Hebrew? We look the first one called to be ab. Ab is nothing but the LF energy which has been given for you when you open up your mouth. How it has to be, he said, orek, O-R-E-K. The word orek is nothing but renewed your head like a grammatious program to the Lord. How are you going to renew your head like a grammatious program? The first thing is, you have to get back into the interlinear scriptures of the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic. That's what the word orak is all about. So how you do over there? First you learn the word of Lord God in the Hebrew and in the Greek. And you have to understand that in the languages going through what, for example, you have in the interlinear English, the King James Version or the Authorized Version. And from there on, the languages where you reside in any part of the world, for example, in India, where we reside, being your mother tongue, that's what you look. In the mother tongue, you try to interpret it. And then afterwards, you go to the state tongue or the state language, what they talk, the neighboring states, what they talk. You come to look upon them because you have to be an effective minister who have to be as a people who is going to show the full proof of his ministry and having diligence enough to go and shine forth the glory of Lord God, as he said, the earth shall be filled with his glory and his where it is in Numbers 14.21. So what you have to do, you have to be there available to do that work of Christ. So for that, you put diligence to learn that language in the first Hebrew and Greek. That's why exegeomai is so much important in our pulpits. Exegetical study of Bible doctrine is so much important. First, you have to come from the original Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic, and then you have to go back in the languages which are there for you in your mother tongue, in the neighboring things, the things pertaining to XYZ. That's what we look how you deal with long suffering, what we call over here, emphasizing the word in the Greek, macrothumia, aporek. And that's a beautiful word for us to understand because this macrothumia demands that we go on with the process of ap followed by orek. And dear brethren, we need to look. In this orek concept, many people are failing today. Therefore, you need to learn those languages. You need to get back to master yourselves. What's your business? Your business is to glorify Lord God the Father. Just Lord. Your business is not to fill in trash in your brain. You have to fill in up until to the brim, the water. Then the water will become into wine. What is the water? The water of Lord God, which you did in John chapter 2. How it can become a wine. <laughs> the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And up until the last of that event of the day, the wine was superb. And that's what the people witnessed. And they said, earlier they give the good wine, later on they will be contaminated. But this man has given until to the end the great wine, the wine which is so superior to taste. You know what is that? The ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, through the lives of you and me on this earth. How it can become wine if it has not been filled up with the water? If it has been filled up with the trash? It cannot. It's not just... We are accountable to the English-speaking world. It's a tough thing for us to get back into the translation. It's a tough thing for us to make up our life in other languages as well. But we are not accountable only to the people of English-speaking men. We are accountable to the people of the entire world who have many dialects, who have many languages, who have many bilingual things going on with them. And every word and every character of the Bible has to be taught in the pictographical representation for them. It's not just we have fun with our life, with the things on this earth, in our mother tongue, in our neighboring states' tongues, and what the people foolishly call themselves, the movement of tongues, gibberishly jumping along and dancing along and making up on the things pertaining to this stupid life on this earth. They're not for that tongues of life. We are not that for, we are not that for that we are not for that sort of a life. The tongue ceased at AD 30. And then from AD 70 till AD 70, 40 years of time for them to learn the word of God. And in AD 70, the tongues got seized. A 40 years of evangelism to those people to believe in Christ and make up their life to walk 
in the path of righteousness of the Lord. Because we find in Isaiah chapter 2 in verse number 3 emphasizing the law will come out from Zion and the teaching will come out from Jerusalem. He goes to give us those thoughts. Why? Because now if the law was coming from Zion and teaching was coming from Jerusalem, then we have the church to teach the truth of Christ, the entire Bible doctrine. And that's what we look. The church has an entire Bible doctrine to be taught. And that's what we're doing, dear brethren. You people are still not even able to master up your English languages. You're not able to master up the things pertaining to your mother tongue languages. Every soul is precious in the sight of God. Therefore, he prays, every flesh whom we have given... I have to show them the eternal life and who, who will be the mediators for that or who will be the agents for that, the church. Being sealed and kept by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, until the day of redemption, the church. And in that universal church, it belongs for you and me. What have you done? What is our part? What is our role? On the other part, just look the thrash in your neurons, how much it has been filled up. How much of your thrash has been kept in your neurons? Just think. The neurons of your brains will tell how much of your data has been occupied for foolish justing, morology or kenology or phytology rather than paralogizomai, calculation of your true spiritual life in Christ. Empty talk, idle talk, foolish talk. At the end, what would you find in them? At the end, have you made them to come to Christ? At the end, have you led them to understand the truth in them? So that they can come to know the true living Lord of a God. What is the truth in them? The earthen vessel which has been given the treasure of Lord God, the Holy Spirit filled in them. So that they can talk the terms of Christ. Have you thought about them? Because they have been made in the image and the likeness of God. Have you edified them? The soul will perish forever. The people who are preaching, sugar-coated preaching, they talk ideally to impress their soul, to impress their body. And that doesn't edify you. They talk ideally about you. They talk the things which are beautiful about you. That means the soul could be pleased, not the spirit, to transform. And that's how the church age has been taken into the lusts of its own desires on this earth rather than fulfilling the Lord's mind on this earth. The church age, if you can look, dear brethren, in the present Christendom, it's very pathetic for us to not have so much of great grieving and squelching and, ex and vexing and lying and resisting to Lord God. The Holy Spirit has been done. Never in the past it was. As we looked upon that verse, in Jeremy, I think he says, the fathers have sinned, but the children have done more worse than them. Now we look in the present Christendom, you look upon the church age. If the past dispensation are compared to the fathers, the present dispensation will be compared to the children. We are doing and dealing with Lord God, the Holy Spirit, as horrible as it can ever be recorded or imagined in the mind of man. As horrible as that. Living such a sinful life having all the records, yet coming not to confess, yet making up the life to be sinful. And what you're able to look? To see that we're glorifying Christ? No, dear brethren, you are not at all glorifying my Father in heaven. You're not that virgin, life, virgin wife to the Lord. At Christ, the Lord of God gives you a chance to come back and look what's there in the heavenly standards. What is desiring of Father? What is desiring of you? He wants to talk about those terms, not the terms of this earth, because he knew very well the terms of this world will vanish off. What we have, we have the terms of Christ for us. And we have the terms to look upon the things that which are pure, that which are good, that which are honest, that which are credible for us according to the standards of the Lord's mind. We have that which has been demanded for us through his word. 
and nothing else than that. And what we are doing day by day, we are still looking the past sins to be reflected in our life. How much God the Father has chosen us, how much God the Father has given us this privilege, so that with gentleness, ap or act, we have to do the things pertaining to God. With goodness, we have to make up the soul pertaining to Christ. With the things pertaining to what we can say as gentleness, we have to make up our soul and body to be tob, followed by the word to be tub, tob, tub. That means how much you have to be kind enough to look upon their lives and pull them from the lake of fire. Because on the earth, you may have grudge or anything against them. As the word could say over here for us in Proverbs chapter 18, emphasizing that a man that a brother offended, that's what he used. Brother, one being transgressed, being will be a harder. That means to make him back will be harder than a strong city. Because harder to be won. So you may think he has cheated, he has done this, he has done that. But remember, his soul goes to hell. If you don't correct him according to the word of Lord God, by showing forth the kindness to the will of Lord God. How to learn that kindness? Invest your time in truth. Invest your time in learning the mind of Christ. Not knowing the things or the affairs of the people who are grimming constantly, who are making the Lord cut the Holy Spirit to be weeping on the offers. And you know what? Lord cut the Holy Spirit has all the records about you and me. Don't worry on that. You are not to be in a a person who goes to spread that. He has all the information on it. You're not the person to be a tail bearer for it. Or a man like a post one. Who says a postman who goes to give all the posts and letters. Or you're not an advertisement for that. Lord God the Holy Spirit knows about you. Reprimand through the truth. If they're willing, they will repent. If they don't will, Lord God the Father knows better treatment than that, how to deal with them. Our duty is to cry out and tell what is there in the Bible. What they decide with that, it's left to them, whether they want to inculcate the truth, whether they want to be fellowship of the truth, whether they want to make up as 1 John chapter 1, verses 1 to 3 emphasizes that he desires through our life's eternal relationship with him all the time. If you fear the Lord God, you would say, you will not lose Christ at any cost. No matter whatever it is, you will come to know the truth. That's what your life will be to Christ. And yet, dear brethren, you are offending your brother. Means you are going to be as a person who has been transgressing your brother. You know how you transgress your brother? Just don't think a heartbreak talk you have with him or X, Y, Z. A transgression over here, dear brethren, has a lot of meaning to understand than what we can simply think that you have been offending your brother. So, dear brethren, the word offended over here has been called to be pasha. Who is a pasha? A pasha is a person, dear brethren, who goes to be spreading apart because in his viewpoint of life, he has never opened up his mouth to the thought process of Bible doctrine. Therefore, you know how they deal with that. The person who doesn't have the word of Lord God will try to make up his life to be compromised like a poor person who goes to make up supplications. But he doesn't talk like a rich man who goes to talk with a very strong reply, all strength. Who is a rich man? The man who has the word of Lord God. He goes to talk that and he goes to change him. That's what he does. He doesn't cause him to get offended, but he goes to change him. He goes to tell him the truth. He goes to make him to understand the Lord's mind. A rich man that meant to say what the person who has been rich in the word of Lord God, he goes to talk strictly, roughly. He goes to answer up the things with a great strength because he knew the viewpoint of Bible doctrine. If such and such things have not been done, then for sure you'll go to lake of fire. And what else we can go to cook up on our life when you're not able to make up, to look to be in the heaven and all the things of this earth is what you're making up as a poor man who comes to give your entreaties. And who goes to give about your supplications, 
who goes to ask about the things pertaining to the grace. Because this is the way how a poor man will use his life because he is not able to renovate his head in the thought process of Bible doctrine. Therefore, he goes on for entreaties. But whereas a rich man, the person who has used his viewpoint of life, who has made his thought process in his head to be renewed in the Bible doctrine, he answers up with a strong reply. The brother may be offended. He knows very well. But if he's not going through this process of a strong reply, he will end up in the lake of fire. Therefore, he says over here, a brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city. That means we can overcome a strong city because today or tomorrow, once again, the new and the new earth, new heaven and the new earth will happen in the sight of God. But that soul which has lost by not knowing the truth will be forever in the lake of fire. Therefore, the brother who has been offending, who is the person who is offending? It's you. When you neglect the truth in Christ, when you don't understand the Lord's mind in Christ, it's you, dear brethren. And that's what the people are trying to do in our pulpits. It's you. Negligence of the word of God. Offending is nothing but passion because your mouth is not been renewed in the thought process of the deep point of Bible doctrine because you're not gentle enough, you're not good enough, you're not long suffering enough to show forth your app or act to these people. You're not at all good enough in all of these things. You're not at all good. You're still a poor man who's trying to have your entreaties. You know, when Alexander the Great, why we call the Great? Because he never gone for entreaties. He never gone for asking supplications. He demanded. He demanded that you learn my language and come and talk to me. People are looking poor because they have entreaties to talk. They're having many entreaties today. Just look, the life will understand money and much entreaties has been done today in our pulpits because the way how you people are going through will surely reflect back that you're worthless. Entreaties. <laughs> and what's finding today in our pulpits? People love entreaties. They don't want a rich man who goes to talk roughly. Until you can eat some food, like a baby has been trained up, we train smoothly. But when you're grown up to drink your milk and you know that your stomach cannot stay away from hunger, then we come to give you roughly the word of God. They're not over having to give again entreaties. While you're a kid, we speak like a kid. When you grow up, we love to talk to you like a man, not like a kid any longer. That's what he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I have many great things to talk with you, but I find still you are drinking milk. I am making some poor entreaties with you, poor supplications with you. But I want to give you strong meat. Be ready for that. Because there are many things to talk to tell, he said. But dear brethren, today, the things which we have to look in the word of Lord God is not at all pertaining to the will of God. The way how these people they are passing through, the way how these people are making up their life as Christians, getting together to celebrate their feasts, getting together to celebrate the fun of the food, calling it as a harvest festival. A harvest festival to cook the food and to spread the food in the church and say we have done great harvest what harvest you can do without having a soul to be there to be coming to church what soul you have found to harvest yourself and that's what the Christian attitude is looking celebrating harvest festival in the sense of what making money Making and coming and making other things to say that we have got a good crop, we have got this, we have got that, so we come to harvest. Just throw them aside. We have nothing to do with that. Harvest of your souls, how much it is. Have anyone come to church by your way of behavior, by your way of life? 
At least can we look a woman can make a husband to come to church as fast Peter 3 emphasizes. By her good way of behavior, she can make him to come and understand to the will of God. Do you have that? Have you won your own husband? Have you won your own wife? Have you won your own children? Forget about the others. Where is the truth between you both? Where is the bond that Lord God the Father in heaven by sending his angel has married you? you right woman. Where you get it? Is she not your own counterpart? Now what we're doing, dear brethren, day by day, are we counting worthy to Christ? You know how much you're grieving and squelching and vexing and lying and resisting Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and God the Father comes up with one more day in your life, then you be thankful to the Lord because He has still a hope in you that you're going to change. And God knows in every past we will not change. Yet he comes in hope. What an undying love he has upon us. He cometh up to say, I have a hope in him, he will change because I have given him the spur of my son. I have made him in my likeness, I have made him in my image. He will surely change, he will come back to know the truth. He will be worshipping me in that spirit and in truth. He will be coming to fulfill the desires of my heart. He will come. But you know what we are proving? We are proving we are worthless, dear brethren. We are really not at all worth. We think we are really great and good. We are the most culprits than the fallen angels. We are most worst people than the fallen Satan. They couldn't have the involving mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, but we do have. The blasphemous things which you are able to do, the blasphemous things which you are able to practice. We cannot justify ourselves having a log in our eyes and trying to tell to remove the speck from the other person in his eye. <coughs> we are the worst of all time. That Lord of God has given you this grace. Not to be like those angels which have rebelled against Christ. But to be that faithful church, his wife, he is desiring you to be a position of wife. And you know how much you are really grieving and squelching and vexing and lying and resisting. You may say, no, I'm not doing that. You're doing it because you're not able to get up your cross every day and come to church. You're not even qualified as a Christian, you're just using your tag name as a Christian, not even coming to the church for minimum 365 days a year, then you'll be qualified as a Christian. Far less you can understand about the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, for a span of three years, what he taught in the place of Ephesus, the path of judgments, increasing knowledge, showing them the paths of Christ, or the direct way of life. You're not still in the past dispensation for looking of orac paths of life. Though many times orac parts of life have been given for us to look. Even in Isaiah chapter 2 verse number 3 he said the paths of life referring back to orac. But we are called now to be derac he says in Isaiah chapter 14 verse number 14 which is totally different from orac. Orac says only renew your head to build a wall of fortification in the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Whereas derac says you are living in the ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit and you are enjoying every breath of Lord God the Holy Spirit. So that your every part of life is brought into captivity for Christ as a grammatious program in the Lord. That's the derac way of life. That's the derac way of life. And what your mouth has been talking out. <laughs> Would you be ashamed to look. That you are worthless. Because he says over here in Psalms chapter 18. Emphasizing in verse number 20. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. That means what your mouth has been going to talk. What your thing pertaining to the fruit of your mouth has been there. The fruit of your mouth if it has been maligning, gossiping, churching and making up to talk. Even in James as he emphasizes good water and the salt water cannot come from the same mouth. How much we have to maintain our tongue to be for good in Christ. How much of your mind has to be well prepared, well trained to be mature enough to realize and to understand the talks which you talk with others has to be long-suffering, goodness and gentleness and edify them to Christ. And lead them to Christ. 
How much of your life has been there for it? And how much of your life has been away from it? And then, dear brother, day by day you look. How much you are really worthless? How much you are really able to live a life that which is far away from the eternal plan of God? You are his wife. A great damage could be done in a relationship by the wife, not by the friends, not by the colleagues, not by the XYZ ones. A wife does a great damage. Because a man can overcome his parents, a man can overcome his colleagues, his friends, but a wife does a great damage, a man will really fall off. That's why women can make or break him. <laughs> but in the grace of Christ, our Lord, the church has been given a place of a woman to be his wife. Christ, the Lord of God, has already paid full for it. He has paid in full for it. And yet, we are looking how much we are far away from the truth. We are breaking the heart of the Lord of a God, then the fallen angel, Satan, then the fallen angels which have gone with Satan, because he has given us his great mentor, paraclete guide, Lord God, the Holy Spirit, where he lived in that, where he was born in it, where he made up his pilgrimage trip on this earth in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and he has given that for us, and we are simply making fun of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. We are not even caring about it. How can your mouth be opening up with a fruit so that the words of truth can come out of your belly? How come it can be there? And what we are finding day by day? We are simply wasting the valuable grace of our Lord. In your gimmicks, in your pastoral tricks, pleasing to be callous in the sight of men, you are wasting the valuable grace of my Christ, dear brother. In spite of that, Lord God, the Father has a hope upon you that you're going to come back to the will of the Lord. He has such a great pleasure for you. He has such a hope. He has such a reality. And that we are not able to look upon that reality. We are not able to look upon that truth. Why? Trash has been filled in your brain. Delete the trash. Cleanse it. If you're able to good, if you're able to get that which is good and bad from it, cleanse it. Make it up to the will of the Lord. Make it up to the plan of the Lord. And be the faithful wife of the Lord, as opposed only to one husband in Christ. Because he looks truth in our inward parts. He looks the desire of our inward parts in saving the perishing souls. If Christ, O oh Lord of God, would be over here, how we would be. How his wife as a church should be. And people are enjoying to have <laughs> harvest festivals. Though they know not, harvest is plenty. Every soul is precious. But every soul cannot come to heaven if that soul has not been transformed into the spirit. It's not the soul that goes. As Luke 24 teaches, it's the spirit. And if that spirit is not been renewed or transformed in the will of Lord God the Father, then what's the life of this earth which we are living? Just think. Just sit and analyze your life. Are you able to edify others? Are you able to talk to them the things pertaining to God? Are you able to lead them in the path of Christ? Are you able to tell them the eternal salvation in the Lord? Or are you being a backbiter in your mental attitude, sins towards them? Retaliation, wrath, anger, belies, judging, gossiping. Was it, was it worth for you 
Just look and analyze. Just look and understand. Was it worth for you? Is it worth for you? <laughs> and yet, dear brother, you people are still trying to live with a great courage to say, Lord, you are a gracious God, best of grace upon us. As a poor person who goes to entreat, you are going to have your supplications to the Lord rather than being a rich person in the view part of Bible doctrine and look upon the strong word of the Lord and go to correct your life. The poor people go on to have supplication for your soul. The rich man goes to reprimand for your spirit. Don't be worse sinners than what Satan is all about. Don't be worse sinners. Satan has done maximum damage to the Father in heaven, by that we meant to say. Distrusting the trust which has been given to it, not taking away the one third part of the angels, that's what we're replacing, that's what we're replacing them. <coughs> that's not a damage. The damage is breaking the trust. In any relationship, breaking of the trust, that's the great damage, irreparable damage, until you come back and confess it. Satan didn't go to confess it. But rather instead, Satan said, it goes to rebel. Thinking it can be like the Most High God, and it can be like God, and what's there with the thing pertaining to Yahweh Elohim, that's what Satan thought. And what is God like? Or what is Jehovah like? He showed it to Satan. And that's what we learned the lesson from Eve. When she ate the fruit, she looked what is God like because of the judgment came upon them, letting go the spirit and shriveled up them to the left of us, dichotomy with body and soul, rather than having the trichotomies which were earlier before they fall in Christ. Now she realized what God is like. The same thing, Satan also might have gone before it, it in its fall. What it should have been in that great communion of the fellowship with the Lord. And the eternal Father in heaven looketh and desireth through us that fellowship. And why is it we still walk a life that which is absolutely vanity? The life that you're walking, dear brother, just look, it's absolute vanity. That's what you're able to look, that's what you're able to find, that's what you're able to realize. And yet, dear brother, much of the people in the present Christendom have lost the idea to walk in truth, to live a life in truth, to be preached the truth. And they're simply enjoying the life with the lies of this earth. Dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost, leadeth us to the praise of His glory, in His matchless, marvelous, in fact, divine, glorious grace. So with our head and eyes closed, the closing ones being dedicated to those of without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In our will, telling to Lord God, the Father, and the privacy of His soul, that you believe my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Savior, that's the most selfishly and eternal truth. The eternal truth for us were very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the grace must grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Where we teach learn the quiet apostles, know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Whereas for the fast teacher, the grace must to care so thon logan. Herald the word in season not sin, because there are not more witnesses where they have been called. The number one diamond of witnesses in the infinity for the Bible in our hearts. And number two diamond of witnesses or hearers. If the hearers, dear brother, not only besides nature, the entire only cause were witnesses and what so work. Rightly dividing the word of truth is our work. So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide. Rather than occupying in your mind with the thrash of this world, look upon those things that which are pure. Look upon those things that which are having virtue. Look upon those things which are making up to be holy in the presence of the Lord. Looking upon those things come to serve the Lord. Because the great work, what we have as a pastor teacher, is to rightly divide the word of truth. If there are no hearers, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will witness us and what's our work? To exemplify the proof of our ministry being sent by the Lord in rightly dividing the word of truth. As a rich man who goes to speak strongly, 
rather than the poor who goes to make supplications for the soul. The work of a pastor teacher is to be making recommendation upon your spirit to learn the mind of truth. So dear brethren, which way you want to go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. As Lord God, the Holy Ghost, let us the praise of His glory in His matchless, marvelous, infinite, divine, glorious grace. Infinitely divine, Holy Father, be grateful and thankful for the great privilege, O Lord, which Thou hast given to us fellowship with Thee through Thy Word. What else we have on this earth, O Lord, to cherish or nourish according to Your mind? It's Your will that You are able to give us to realize how much we are really worthless, useless people on this earth. The things pertaining to Lord God, the Holy Spirit, Father, how we are dealing with it. We are most worst liars and we are the most worst criminals than the fallen angels being headed by Satan, the adversary. At O Lord, you have given us this grace as Joshua, high priest, whose garments have been cleansed, who put upon his head again the head tire so that he can come to serve you by walking in the spirit of truth and making up his lips to be associated with the word of God, to be taught, and people coming over there to learn your knowledge. And that's what you gave him a privilege, O oh Lord. We look upon the same thing of us as well. Therefore, every day we are alive, every day we are able to look, every day we are able to think that we can conform to the image of Christ and come back to your presence and serve you in spirit and in truth. And yet, O oh Lord, people are not able to recognize or realize this. But thou hast given us this grace, O oh Lord, upon the sinful mankind to understand your mind by Lord God, the Holy Spirit, indwelling and controlling and guiding and leading and teaching to us the truth. So, Father, as we have come once again to understand your mind, as a serious process, we pray the mentor ministry of Lord God, the Holy Ghost, to end up telling you to bless us by this message of fears which thou hast prepared and kept for us, to recognize and to understand your mind on today's date of a day past to the praise of your glory, in a matchless, marvelous, in fact, divine, glorious grace. In Christ's name we ask, sovereign Lord, may Lord God, the Holy Ghost, challenge and bless us by this message of fears. In Christ's name we ask, sovereign Lord. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat>